Hi, my name is Alex Dolphin, and welcome back to another episode of Ex Ante. Today we're going to discuss the case Lorillard Tobacco Company v. Riley. This case was heard in the Supreme Court of the United States in the year 2001. Let's go ahead and jump into the facts of the case. So the defendant here is the Attorney General of Massachusetts. Now the Attorney General of Massachusetts had promulgated some regulations in his state that prohibited cigarette advertising, tobacco advertising, in certain areas. Um, it prohibited billboards in front of schools. It prohibited, um, you know, allowing to place cigarettes at checkout aisles. Um, prohibited point of sale advertising, outdoor advertising. Um, so it restricted the location where tobacco companies could adver advertise uh, their products. And the tobacco companies brought a lawsuit, and they alleged that this was an unconstitutional act by the Attorney General of Massachusetts because he did not have the authority to promulgate these regulations because Congress had preempted this area of law. It had pre expressly preempted this area of law when it passed the FCLAA. Now the FCLAA was an act that was meant to address um, tobacco in our country. Um, the Surgeon General reported that tobacco could cause severe health issues and so Congress reacted. Um, and they passed this act which required warning labels um, to be placed upon you know, cigarettes. Uh, so when you buy a cigarette, you see a warning label as I'm sure um, you've seen now uh, that was enacted here. Um, Congress put in an express preemption provision. Preemption means that under the Supremacy Clause, the federal law, if Congress chooses to regulate an area and they are constitutionally regulating, like they he are here underneath their Commerce Clause power, um, then their regulation preempts states from regulating. So states cannot regulate where Congress has regulated because of the Supremacy Clause and preemption. The Congress has preempted the states from regulating in this area. And so there is an express preemption for provision in the FCLAA. And it reads, No requirement or prohibition based on smoking and health shall be imposed under state law with respect to the advertising or promotion of any cigarettes, the packages of which are labeled in conformity with the provisions of this chapter. So both the majority and the dissent talk about this express preemption provision. Um, the majority argues that this preemption provision was meant to preempt all types of regulation on, by states on tobacco companies. So tobacco companies aren't allowed to regulate the advertisement of tobacco companies because Congress has preempted them from doing so. Congress has already chosen to regulate this and underneath the supremacy clause, Congress's regulation is gonna re reign supreme. The federal government's regulation is gonna reign supreme and the states won't be able to contradict that or to go afoul with that uh, standard that's set forth in the FCLAA. And so that's what Justice O'Connor holds. She holds that Congress intended, she says we have to look to the purpose, to the intent of Congress. And when we do, we see that Congress intended to preempt all types of regulation um, of advertising and promoting of tobacco products by certain companies. So because Congress exemptly preempted this, states cannot try and regulate the advertising of cigarettes as well because Congress preempted it and the Supremacy Clause. Now, Justice Brennan argues for a more narrow construction of this express preemption uh, provision. He says that Congress really only intended this preemption provision to apply to, you know, the labeling, the warning labels on cigarettes. And he says, there's a good reason for that. You know, um, we don't want different states to have different regulation on warning labels. What if one state said you have to put a picture of cigarette smoking lungs and then the other said you just have to put, you know, a little word label. Well, that would put undue burden on commerce, right? Now, now uh, tobacco companies are going to have to manufacture different packages for different states and it's not really fair. So he says that's what Congress was trying to address. Congress was not trying to address the location. Um, and so Congress hasn't expressly preempted states from regulating the location um, where tobacco can be advertised. And so you have Justice Brennan and the four dissenting judges arguing for a more narrow construction of the express preemption provision. Then you have the majority arguing for a more broad construction, a more broad interpretation of this preemption provision saying that, yeah, it preempts all uh, regulation by states on tobacco advertising, whereas the dissent says, no, it just preempts states from uh, requiring different labels. It doesn't preempt the location. Um, preemption it is an interesting topic because you have at one end, you have the state's rights and you have the 10th Amendment. At the other hand, um, you have the Supremacy Clause. 
Um, what is interesting, what is important rather, to see is the distinction between the two. Now the Tenth Amendment allows the states to regulate where the Congress hasn't been given the power to, where it's not been enumerated to. But Congress here was acting within its enumerated power to regulate commerce, right? And because it's regulating commerce, it's acting within its enumerated power, when Congress enacts something based upon that enumerated power, the Supremacy Clause requires that, you know, if Congress has put in this preemption provision, the Supremacy Clause requires that that federal law um, be the sole body of law. And so if state regulations, you know, contradict the federal law, like they do here, placing more of a burden on tobacco companies, um, that's wrong because the Supremacy Clause requires that the federal law be the supreme law of the land. Um, so what preemption is trying to address is that conflict between state um, and federal law, but it's important to see the distinction between the Tenth Amendment and the federalism concerns, uh, because the federalism concerns are where Congress is, you know, maybe not acting within its enumerated power, maybe trying to force or coerce a state to um, in, in, introduce a federal program. And so they're different between the two, and there's a distinction uh, that's important to note. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Bye-bye.